Hey, I'm back. This time I got a hack because I'm having a bad hair day and a beard because I'm having a bad face day. All right, now I want you guys to picture a Nigerian prince. It's going to be weird, but I want you to think about this. Picture a Nigerian prince. Someone like this guy. Picture this Nigerian prince. Now, he hypothetically has millions and millions of dollars, and he needs help moving that money. Now, because of some pesky Nigerian regulations, all he needs is to find an American. An American via email that he can find that'll have a bank account number that he can use. And if they'll just let him use that bank account number, he can finally move that money and you will be handsomely, handsomely rewarded. How's that sound? Does that sound legit? Sure. It sounds legit, huh? Well, it did sound legit to a lot of people last year. In fact, this is one of the oldest scams in the world. And last year alone, over $700,000 of American money got taken because of this scam. Now I know what you're thinking. Oh, these poor elderly people. What channel is the Netflix? But what if I was to tell you that it was the millennials that are getting scammed way more than the elderly? You'd probably say something like, okay, boomer. Okay, whatever, boomer, which is stupid. It's a stupid phrase that needs to die. It's dumb. I'm a millennial and I think it's dumb. That phrase needs to die. But it's also makes you look stupid because it's us that's getting scammed way more than the elderly. Some of you are also thinking like, what? <laughs> Not me. I'm very tech savvy. Look at me. I have a onesie on. And yeah, you're tech savvy, but you're also too trusting. We're going to get into why, but there's reasons why we're getting scammed more than ever. This is the same generation that also is obsessed with astrology and the zodiac. Call me now for your free tarot reading. Don't be a rude boy. So why is it that the millennials are getting scammed way more than the elderly? There's a couple of reasons. One, millennials are way more comfortable sharing their information online. The other reason, which is very ironic, is that millennials think that the elderly are much more likely to be a target than us millennials. There's also a scientific reason why this is true. If you look, I mean, this is from the conversation. They said, we did not evolve to live in a world of strangers. Our brains are wired to live in relatively small tribes in which everyone's character and past behavior is well known. For this reason, we overconfidently ascribe qualities to someone we've never met in person but have corresponded with relationships and trust can form quickly over email and social media and that's exactly what's happening constantly to millennials we are constantly online constantly talking to strangers or people that we know even a little bit online and we form that trust bond because well science let's talk about what kind of scams to watch out for online dating is a huge huge reason why millennials are getting scammed and there's a lot of different ways that they can get you one is catfishing no not that catfishing with neve and the gang i don't even know what the other guy's name is but um i don't like him i don't trust him it's like that kind of catfishing but it's a little bit different instead of a 490 pound man in the basement covered in cheeto dust pretending that he's rob Lowe, trying to talk to you and then you never meet in person until neve and the gang show up with a camera crew instead it's a little bit like hey let me try to move this conversation offline and then once they do and they get your cell phone number then they're just going to dig and dig for information until they can steal your identity the other big one to watch out for with online dating is malware malware is going to have a lot of uh, key things to watch out for one no Nobody types that fast. If you're talking to somebody that you matched with on Tinder or Bumble and they're typing that fast, nobody's that excited to talk to you. That's kind of a dead giveaway. The next thing to watch out for is that they respond in scripts. It's very scripted. They can't answer questions off the cuff like, where did you go to school? What did you really think happened to Jeffrey Epstein? Things like that. They're not going to be able to answer that. One of the most obvious signs of malware is that they ask you to click a link. Nothing's more seductive than typing out a bunch of paragraphs in bad English and then going, hey, Click this link to see some sexy photos. That's when you should know something's up. And the most obvious sign of malware is that, I mean, this is not scientific, but they're just too hot to be on online dating. They're just too hot. They look like this. Haley, I love you. I'm sorry about the last video. But when you get someone like that messaging you online right away, asking you to click links to see more pictures, be very, very suspicious. Lastly, the last one you want to watch out for in online dating is blackmail. Blackmail, pretty obvious. A lot of people know what it is. It's tale as old as time. It's the classic revenge of the dick pic recipient. Some of these scammers are going to start sweet talking to you until you start sending some very, very risque pictures of yourself. And unless you want everyone to know how weird it looks, you better pay them. And that's the blackmail part. Not all these scams happen online. A lot of them happen offline or when they call you on your phone. A big one is called the imposter scam. It's when somebody's going to call you and pretend to be somebody important, like, like a family member or maybe like a support agent that's like, hey, 
we uh, want to re-up your Microsoft subscription. I just need some details from you over the phone. The IRS imposter scam is a big one. A lot of times somebody will call you up and they might even know your last four digits of your social security. They might even give you a fake badge number, say that they're, oh, hi, I'm Ben Johnson from the Internal, Internal Revenue Service and uh, uh, you're gonna go to jail unless you pay me right now. They'll tell you that you owe them money and that the only way to pay them is with a prepaid debit card or a wire transfer. Here's the thing, the IRS doesn't work like that. If you end up paying them, you're gonna get scammed. What are the warning signs to watch out for? Let's go straight to the government's website and see what they say. Warning signs. Will the IRS call you via phone? No. Right away, that, that should tell you it's not the IRS. They're also not gonna email you. They will send you something in the mail because that's the government for you. Also, the IRS is not gonna ask you to pay over the phone, whether a prepaid debit card or a money transfer. They're not gonna require any specific payment because you're gonna just have to get it squared up with them. If something like this does happen, just hang up. Don't, don't say anything to them. And then if you are worried about your taxes, reach out to the IRS, call them, but don't trust anybody that just calls you. I don't care what kind of fake badge number they give you. Let's wrap it up with some ways that you can protect yourself from scammers. The first way you can protect yourself is to put a passcode on your phone. I know it's a pain in the ass. Maybe you post a hot picture of yourself and you're like, oh, I gotta check. I gotta see how many likes I get like every two minutes. I know I do that, but I do. But anyway, if you lose your phone, God forbid, all the hacker has to do is access your phone and they can start installing apps that are just gonna steal all of your data from you. And that you're screwed. The next thing that I learned about, I didn't even, never thought about this, but be very, very careful when you're on public Wi-Fi. A lot of businesses that have public Wi-Fi that you use have to give you some kind of liability notice saying like, hey, whatever happens, hey, it's not our fault. You're just using our Wi-Fi. And that's because it's very easy for hackers to swoop in if you're accessing sensitive information like your bank account or your taxes. They can come in and they can find that information and steal your identity. The next tip, be skeptical. I'm always skeptical, but be skeptical no matter what kind of message you receive. If you get an email from somebody that is your friend, just ignore it and call them and be like, hey, did you send me an email about sunglass discount? Like, what, what is this? Call them out on it and they'll be like, no. And then you just delete the email, you find out right away. You know your friends aren't gonna just email you like that or send you Facebook messages like that and ask you to just click a link. It might seem like they did, then just call them. Be like, hey, I just wanna be sure. Did you send me this? Are you serious right now? Is this what you, are you my grandma? What are you doing? Next thing you wanna do is spot the imposter. Anytime somebody calls, I, I, I don't know about you guys, but every time somebody calls me, I just don't answer if I don't know the number. And then once that call ends, I immediately Google the number. Googling the number is huge because there's all sorts of communities and websites where people will go on and share numbers and talk about whether or not they received the spam or the same call or what was said on the call whether or not it's spam and you could tell right then and there like oh okay thank god i didn't answer or waste my time or get scammed and the last thing and this is pretty easy but if anybody calls you and they're just talking right away and it sounds like a robo call hang up hang up immediately because that's illegal the federal trade commission says it is illegal to send any kind of robotic scripted calls like that so you know you're safe just hang up and that's it watch out for any uh, nigerian princes emailing you about something that's too good to be true or some super hot girl that you met on tinder who wants you to click some link and you know wants you to start texting her offline you know that's not true watch out for these scams be skeptical google the phone numbers put a passcode on you'll be good that's it for today make sure to subscribe and to comment below on any upcoming topics you want to see and always stay fallible